Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm um, going to keep going with this research thing. Uh, I, I've, I've compiled many of the names here, and I need to do a few more before I move on to the next phase. So, let's see, where's my research, my, uh, my treatment is right here, here are my names. So there's Jumper, James, Edwin, Wade, everybody, all my characters are named, some of them are real people from the era. So I just need a couple of a couple of mm, couple more places. So let's go with Okay. So places. I need a cantina name. The signal box we have the railway company in the town so the town is the town is let's see I have that in my research so let's open this research research document when Port Elizabeth The town, this is the town, which I need to learn to pronounce. So the town is this. And the railway company is, let's look it up. I have this over here. This guy is the governor, but what I want to what I want is the uh, 1890 South African Railroad Company. So we're gonna look it up. British South Africa Company, rail transport. The, okay, so let's see. The first passenger carrying services was a small line built by that rail company, but that's pretty early. Netherlands South African Railroad Company, that's in the north though. That might be it. Netherlands, South African, was a railway company established in 1887. The company was based in Amsterdam, operated in the South African Republic during the late 19th century. So that might be it. Whoa, there's the president right there. South African politician. He was one of the dominant political and military figures. The request of... That's the South African... No, that, he's not it. This is the company right here. That's it. Okay, so let's put that in. I'm probably not going to reference this, so I'm not going to not going to put too much stock on it. So, let's go with it. Netherlands South African Railway Company. That is the railway company. There's the town. Places the train. Don't really need that. 
Now we got to name the cantina. Did I shut that down? Oh, okay, here we go. So the cantina. Well, let's do this again. <laughs> Random bar name generator. It's so funny what you can get. Tavern name generator. And I'm not saying I'm going to use one of these, but, you know, I get, but they break, they break ideas loose. The Laughing Nutmeg, Rotten Stars. Stars is good. 12 Coin, Narrow Mango, Attractive Coin. These are pretty dumb. Let's go to a different generator and see what we got. Random Bar Name Generator. Let's try this one. Generate a Bar Name. Polished Cat. Moon is good. Charming escape spot. I like moon. I like stars. The golden star. The rising moon. The... See, this can be changed, too, if it's not hitting me right now. Cantina. Let's look up famous cantinas. Famous cantinas. Let's go with, well, it's in the south. We can call it like the southern moon or the, um, southern cross, southern cross cantina. Uh, Nothing's hitting me right now. So let's just put a placeholder in there. The Red Room, the Star Lounge, the Moon Lounge, Moon Room. I'm going to call it the Moon Room. The Moon Room Cantina. That'll work for now. You can change it later. Okay, so everything's named. So now what we need to do is um, we need to start outlining this thing. So we have our treatment. We have our treatment now and we have our plot points in here. Now we need to start moving in beats in scenes from plot point to plot point to plot point. So this is a process. So I, I think of this in terms of, um, so I, I'm a believer that y you can't have a scene in anything, whether it's a novel or a screenplay or a stage play or whatever, a short story, musical, unless there's conflict, right? So you have to have conflict in every scene. So every scene has to be difficult for the players in that scene for some reason. So you have two options if you don't have if you have a scene with no conflict. The options are either A to add conflict or B to cut the scene out entirely. So as I'm building this out, uh, I need to I need to put running conflict. And I and, and I use sequences and that's borrowed from the screenwriting uh, from screenwriting and, and, and screenplays. So a sequence is, is a series of scenes linked together that tell an idea, that, that convey an idea. Like, you know, 
they fall in love is not a scene. They fall in love is a series of scenes. And so I'm going to think in terms of sequences, and I actually call them conflict sequences in my mind. And the reason I use that construct is to reinforce the notion that there must be conflict throughout the, uh, the entire, throughout every single beat. And this is where the rubber meets the road. So here's where I need to start working. And I'm working with my treatment, and I'm working with my... Um, my plot points and I need to move from one plot point to the next to the next to the next so let's do it we have Jack okay so you can overcome any obstacle no matter how grim with help of good friends and that's the theme act one the hook a vagrant comes flying out of a boxcar reveal the competence and confidence of jumper so that is actually scene one so let's do this Here's how I do it. I go 001. Uh, put a slug, slug, X, boxcar, day. And this is the hook. So this is a slug line. And Let's fill it in a little bit. A vagrant comes flying out of a boxcar. Uh, Jack. No, Jumper. Jumper. Acting arrogant. Tells off the vagrant. Stating that no bums will, no free rides, free rides for bums on his watch. Okay, so that's good. So he is arrogant. Okay, so the significant event is Jumper falls and is run over by the train. So in order to get there... We need to have a scene where he is at the cantina. We need to establish the cantina. So I'm gonna put 002, 002, int cantina night. And in this scene, jumper brags to a bunch of bar patrons about his exploits on the train. Now let's do something. Let's do something where they challenge him to jump from table to table in a kind of game. So here's a chance for us to do a little bit of um, uh, a bit of uh, foreshadowing. Um, he does this with amazing effect until he falls. All right, so someone says you're dead jumper jumper buys a round of drinks let's start out the uh let's start out the love story here but let's have what's her name what is her name amelia Amelia Fox. Let's do this. Let's start the scene out with Cantina Night. So let's start the scene out with, this is going to be a long scene. Jumper at the cantina with friends. 
Amelia Fox sings. She flirts with the guys. Jumper is interested. Amelia is not. Then after the song, Jumper brags to a bunch of patrons, buys a round of drinks. Amelia is unimpressed with the shenanigans. Okay. Let's put a new scene in here. three let's reinforce this let's give him an assignment in Um, let's see, what's his boss's name again? George B. Howe. Office day. So let's do something here in the bar scene. Let's put George they need to meet about a special assignment. George B. Howe's office day. Okay, so we're going to say uh, in George B. Howe's office day. Okay, so George tells Jumper about a surge in Vagrant. In Vagrant freeloaders on a certain train. I need to research what that train is. So I'm going to put an asterisk next to that. Let's do this. Let's put a symbol in here. We're going to go one, two, three. So three asterisks means that I need to research something. That makes it easy to find in the document. So let's put a note at the top that I'm doing that. It's all about organization, right? On a certain train, George wants a jumper to run security. The line jumper requests a pay raise and promotion. Security. Let's now let's let's put a time lock or uh, let's put a time lock on this to make it more interesting. George um, offers a deal if Jumper can rid the train of fifty six. Doesn't matter. 56 vagrants 
I'm going to say case is reported. In one night, the promotion and pay raise is his. Okay, good. Now the now we have a challenge. All right. So now let's see. Let's put some more. Oh, oh, four. Upping the ante. We want to up the ante. So where does this take place? All right. Well, I'm going to stop here for now because I have other commitments. But part of being creative is just putting it in all the pockets of time that you have. So I had a little pocket of time here, like 20 minutes, and filled it up with this. So I'm making progress on this, and uh, it's clearly coming along. I can, hear, I can hear music in my head. I'm already starting to see the story come together. So we're getting close to locking in Act 1. Um, don't want anything fluffy in here, so I'm trying to strip it down. But, uh, okay, that's good. Uh, thanks for joining me, and I will catch you on the next video.